Electric desks are in fashion, and I always get the same three questions, which are 1. Are they really useful? 2. How to choose them? 3. How to use them? This video is to answer these three questions. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, Economist, Posture Therapist, author of the Posture Manual. So regarding question 1, are they really useful? Well, it depends what your indicator is. If your indicator is how frequently do users sit and stand, you might be disappointed because if you buy it for, say, your company, one third of the people will use it all the time, i.e. every day. One third will use it between a few times a week and a few times a month. And one third will never use it. Okay? This is when you have provided them with appropriate training. So if this is your KPI, well, the results are so-so. But there's a very great advantage to electric desks. It is that they are easily adjustable when you sit. And therefore, at the time when we're talking about hot desking, flexible workplaces, people who change their desk every day, they, they, they go to, to work, well, you do need that to make sure that people of different sizes will be sitting at the same desk being comfortable. If you buy the desk for yourself, well, it's the same thing, you know, you will at least make sure that you sit properly and once in a while you will be able to stand. Now, regarding the question on how to choose them, well, there are different things you should pay attention to. Number one is the horizontal sizes. This one is 1 meter 40 in length and 70 in depth. Most desks within the companies are 160 by 80. So 70 is really the minimum depth that you want to place a screen at the proper uh, viewing distance. 80 is ideal, but at, at home it takes also more space in your room. And regarding the length, when 140 is rather okay, because I'm not an architect uh, or I don't have large uh, plans or things like this, it can be 160 or 180 if you work with a lot of paper, but just make sure that it's paper, not mess. The tricky criteria is the height adjustment range. You see, for 90% of the Western population, the ideal desk height when you sit is between 68 and 76 centimeters. And to sell cheap electric desks, some manufacturers sell you desks that don't go lower than 72 or even 74 centimeters. So you know, these desks will be too high for 50%, sometimes 70% of us. Therefore, you need to really pay attention to the lowest uh, height of your desk. If you buy it for yourself, not a problem. You measure the height of your elbow when you sit with your feet on the ground and your hip at least 90 degrees. So that comes to more or less 90 degrees in the knees. And the height between the floor and the elbow will be the height of your desk. So if you're super tall and you should have your desk at 74, you don't care which model you buy. But if you're uh, my size and you need your desk at yeah, 69, 70 centimeters, well, then you really need to pay attention. Same if you buy it for a population. If you buy it for your colleagues, take it super adjustable. This one goes down till 62 centimeters. The maximum standing height is rarely a problem, but if you doubt, well, just do the same. You stand, relax your shoulders, bend your elbow 90 degrees, measure the height of your elbow compared to the floor, and that should be your uh, working height when you stand, just make sure that the desk can go up there. Other important features when you buy will be the type of legs that you put. put, put. You see, usually legs that have a square section are more stable than legs that have a round section. You also need to decide whether you want a memory function or not. And one thing which is super important is to have this cable duct here. This cable duct will make it easier to yeah, store the cables, keep it clean underneath so that the room is easier to clean. And therefore, if you have a cable duct, well, you need uh, cable outlets on the desk, left, right, or here I put both because yeah, I wasn't sure and actually I need both. This thing that you see here is a sound damping panel. Well, I know I'm alone in my, in my office, so I don't really need that, to be honest with you. But if you work in an open space, it can be an additional measure to reduce noise levels. I mean, it's not going to change uh, a bad construction, a bad uh, design, 
but it can help next to other architectural measures. If your computer is not a laptop, but a tower, well, make sure that you have a holder which is attached to the upper part of the chassis so that it can go up with the rest of the desk. Otherwise, the cables will be strained and they will be a limiting factor when you raise the desk. Now, how do you use such desk? Well, step one is, is to plug all the cables and believe me, it's not that simple. What you need to do is make sure that you attach most plugs to the upper part of the chassis so that the cables go with the desk and that will avoid that they are pulled apart. This is super important. I've seen many offices in which when you were raising the desk, the mouse would glide away and things like this. If you have sole desks next to each other, make sure that you keep a two inch gap or something like this between two desks so that they don't say collide with each other or with other objects when you raise them or lower them. Also make sure that you don't put a mess under the desk. I often see drawer blocks which are like say 17 height or something. So with the chassis, you can't actually lower the desk more than lower than 74, which is a waste of your money. And then how do you adjust the right height? Well, basically the idea is that when your shoulders are relaxed, your elbows will be at 90 degrees when your wrist is straight. Okay, so this limits both the pressure in the carpal tunnel and the strain in the um, wrist extensors here. These four arm muscles, which are responsible for tennis elbow, ICA, and the uh, lateral epicondylitis. So you see, I start with the desk, which is too low, and I will raise it until the keyboard touches my fingertips. And here we go, you see? So this is the right standing height. One mistake that many people do is they have it too high so that they can work like this. You see that my shoulders and neck are super contracted because basically they're varying my weight. So this is not the idea. To choose your best sitting height, well, same idea. Relax your shoulders, bend your elbows 90 degrees, wrist straight, start too low and raise. When the fingertips touch the keyboard, the height is okay. Basically, when the desk is too low, you will see that the wrists are extended, yeah? There's here, this position. And this means higher pressure in the carpal tunnel, strain in the elbow. If now the desk is too high, the first time is that you create a pressure point here under the front edge of the desk. And then when it's really too high, you end up with your elbows spread like this, which is a source of neck strain. Last but not least, what's the right timing for postural variation? How long can you sit? How long can you stand? Well, the rule is the following. You shouldn't sit for more than 30 minutes in a row and over your day, so 16 hours plus eight for sleeping, you should be sitting as much as you will be standing, 50-50, okay? You should not stand for too long either because you will be like this. So you see, my recommendation is just consider the desk as one additional tool in your big toolbox for postural variation. So if your desk is high, well, I will drink coffee on the chair, I will pick up the course on the chair, etc, etc. So make sure that I'm never so tired that I end up on one leg. If the desk is low, well, other way around, you know, I will take the phone standing, I will drink coffee standing, I will do the Zoom meetings against the wall, which is the reason why the desk is set like this in the, in, in the room, etc. Et There's one technique which is super useful to, say, maximize your standing and your endurance. You see, the risk when you stand is that you fall on one leg like this. And the idea will be that you put one foot slightly in front of the other, and then you kind of bounce back and forth like this. When you do that, you not only activate the leg muscles, i.e. boost blood flow, but you also create a front back movement, which will prevent you from falling sideways. And finally, you relieve the pressure under the heels. One common mistake is to try and raise your two heels at the same time and then your two, uh, two sets of toes. No, it's not about using the calf muscles for raising your body. It's just about letting your body swing back and forth and let the, the feet follow the movements. And so you're always on one foot and a half, actually. So this being said, now comes the moment to decide where to spend your money. Should you buy an electric desk or not? 
it depends if you don't have a good chair you should first buy a good chair and then when you have the cash to buy a new desk i think that in 2021 when this video was shot it is say a normal course of things to buy an electric desk you will work from home more and more so be well equipped you know there's these desks are not that that expensive anymore i mean this one is like 1100 dollars but you can find um, the, the IKEA, for example, uh, 610 desk, and it does the job for working from home. You also have the possibility to just buy an electric chassis and put a normal wooden plank on top of it or your existing desk, and that will be even cheap, cheaper, like around $350. Just beware the height adjustment range that I mentioned earlier. So, you know, should you buy an electric desk? Yes, but only after you bought a great chair.